Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, No Flight Images. And in this video, I'm going to look at something called print depth. What is it? Well, actually, much like print quality, I don't actually know what it means. Um, I've been asked by people when they're looking at uh, producing prints on different papers, different printers, that they're looking for something that gives them depth. Um, the only problem is, this is one of those nebulous terms that doesn't actually mean more than you really want it to mean. Now, I'm going to have a look at possible meanings of it, and or non-meanings of it, uh, problems of using language to describe pictures, but I'm going to come back to a technique that was, for me, partly inspired by this, about describing your own work that helps you appreciate what it is you value in pictures. But anyway, back to print, you know, print depth. Um, as I say, it doesn't mean much to me. Um, it most obviously isn't the physical depth that the ink penetrates into the paper, because that varies on a paper and printer basis. But I can't imagine anyone really being that interested in something like that. Well, apart from paper manufacturers, anyway. Um, does it just mean perhaps print contrast? Well, possibly. Um, I always test new printers, new papers on a a test image we like this like this one here this print here and there's a black and white version and that allows me to check check that the printer and the paper and the inks and the profile that i may have created or be using for it reproduces the image with an adequate tonal range now in a way that's just a technical issue but it's a biggish one and it's one of the things you have to learn to do right if you want to make great looking prints you can skip over a lot of the technical aspects of it. You don't need to make your own profiles or anything, but being able to produce a perfectly good color test print, black and white test print, is absolutely key to producing great looking pictures of your own photos. And that's what I presume most people want to do. Um, I said, is it contrast? Well, contrast is what contrast is. It varies by paper. Um, is it handling of blacks, perhaps? Um, the term depth, it might mean that. I've heard people say as well, oh, it has an almost 3D look. Well, I'm going to say that's a combination of the picture and the printing and all kinds of things. And once again, unless it is printed on a specialist 3D reproduction style paper, that's not with the stripes on it, then once again, that doesn't really mean much. It's about, because 3D is just a perception of 3D. What about blacks and contrast? Well, simple example, I'll take two black and white prints. Now I've got this one here of some modern architecture. This is printed on a luster paper. And this one of some not so modern architecture. This is Wells Cathedral. This is at probably at least 600 years old. Um, it's printed on a matte rag paper. Now the two are most definitely different. The blacks in this are really strong blacks. Now I've deliberately chosen um, a, a print and a paper to bring out the black there as solid shapes. Now that's a choice of mine as how I wanted to show the structure. I could have exposed it so there was details in some of that black there. There is, there's probably construction details and various other aspects that you can see if you were to look at carefully. Because when it comes down to it, these bars on the windows here, they are not black. In reality, they're quite light colored. It's just how I've chosen to reproduce them. I've emphasized the shape, the structure in the photo, and that's entirely why I've chosen that. Um, here, I don't want dense, deep, sharp blacks because this is delicate stonework. When I look at this as the real thing, I'm impressed by the workmanship of the stonework. I'm impressed by the skills of the stonemasons there. I want to try and convey some of the lightness. So I don't want jet black shadows. I want detail in the shadows. Well, that's, you know, that's one way of looking at um, you know, how I'm describing. Is this print, has, does it have more depth than this one? Well, I'm gonna say no. Um, I happen to like this one better. This is one of my favorite prints I've done for a while. I like it. Um, you know, I use it as a test image because I know it so well. 
I don't use it as my main initial test image. I use one like this because that is devoid of any significant emotional attachment to it. I don't have a feeling of what it should look like. I just know that there are bits which could be correctly reproduced or not correctly reproduced. Crunching of shadows, for example. So you've got that. So that's a choice between, as one potential meaning of it. And here it's about picking a paper and the editing, the printer choice has relatively little importance here, uh, but it's picking a paper and editing to emphasize aspects that I really want to emphasize. Now, you might think, ah, well, I can measure this. And this is where we get into the problems of DMAX and gamut volumes and other things that um, some paper reviews seem to love to include. Um, Yes, this on this luster paper, this has a better D-Max, or blackest black, than this particular paper here. Now, in a way, D-Max is a pretty irrelevant term because I might have a paper here that produces a phenomenally deep black, but in the process of it, it scrunches up my shadows so much that it's almost unusable. I can have black or not black. Um, I want some subtlety. Even in an image like this, I want subtlety in the deep shadows. I don't want it just blocked in as black. And D-Max in itself is just a number that tells you how black the blackest black is. It tells you it's blacker on this paper than it is on this one. Big deal. Two different papers. They're all much of a muchness. Um, I'm going to say if you choose between two papers purely as a result of one has a D-Max of 2.6 and another one has a D-Max of 2.64, then you're wasting your time because the actual differences there are almost invisible. It's about how the paper reproduces the whole tonal gamut that you're trying to print. Bigger on this one, less so on this one, but still as important, it's the whole tonal range that counts. Now, when I'm looking at things like this, as I said, it's about the relevance of the subject and the paper and how they match up together. Now, I've done some other videos looking at initial choices of paper, why you should be relative, relatively conservative in the number of papers you start off with on a new printer until you understand what the differences are. Because if you don't understand the subtle differences, if you can't see them, how can you choose which paper's best? It's very difficult to do. We also have a problem of language here. Now, I'm a native English speaker from England. Uh, that means my interpretation of things is going to be different from a nominal English speaker from the US, um, where English is nominally the same language, but I know there are considerable differences in meaning. So I'd be very careful in describing things linguistically, because what may mean subtle differences to me, uh, Come to think of it, it's not even international. If I meet somebody out on the street and ask them about it, they'll have a different view of what these things mean. It's always the imprecision of it. And some people are uncomfortable with that impreciseness of describing things. So I come back to why do people use such terms? Well, in a way, it's a way of describing their own prints and what they want to achieve. It's not necessarily a very good way of describing it because it doesn't mean anything to anyone else. So, uh, you know, this print has great depth. Yeah, maybe, so what? Uh, what does that mean? What does it help? What I'm gonna say is, and this is a technique that was initially inspired years ago when somebody asked me about depth in some of my prints. What I would say is, take one of your favorite prints, and a print is better for this than an actual photo on a screen because the photo on the screen is only part way there to the end product. Just without having the print to be able to point to it or anything like that, describe one of your favorite prints. Describe aspects of that print that you think are important. Okay, that's actually quite difficult to do. Um, particularly, it depends on how visually oriented you are and how comfortable you are with describing things. Um, it can be easier to take the print and actually point to different areas, to physically do that while you do it. I like how light 
this bit here is. There's a seeming glow comes out of this bit here. Now, when I say this and you can't see the picture, it doesn't mean anything. Um, so take a picture, describe it. Describe it to yourself. You don't have to describe this to anybody. Would it help also then to take two prints and compare them and actually say, the sharpness of the cut of the, the black here brings out the metallic, the structure of the building. It's an architectural style image. This is as well. But this, I want the texture of the stone. To, of the, stone. the delicate tonal variation I can see in the stone that reflects the passage of time, all kinds of things. Now, you can be as pretentious as you like in this and how you describe it. It is your own work after all. Um, do take care that you don't believe too much of your own stuff if you write artist statements and things like that because they're a whole different matter. But um, yeah, describe what matters to you. Why is this useful? Because in describing your picture, even to yourself, you are looking at elements of the picture which you have control over whether that be in your editing, your printing choices, your paper choices, or anything like that. So looking at your pictures lets you be much more serious about what matters. Don't expect suddenly a revelation and start producing massively better prints. It's just part of the process that governs what I would call print quality. Print quality in its broadest terms of, is it a great print? Before I get too serious about this, though, I should, of course, get this picture. This is a canvas print. It was from when I was testing a canvas stretching and mounting system. And the picture, it is one afternoon looking out over the Pacific, somewhere in Northern California. Can't even remember exactly where. Um, I like this picture. It reminds me of a sunny day on the Californian coast. It also makes a great picture for the bathroom. This picture would normally live in our bathroom. Uh, it's printed on a glossy canvas. It hasn't even been coated or anything. It's had several years in a bathroom and it's still in absolutely perfect condition. Now, I really like this picture for me for the seagull. Karen likes this one as well. I also really like this picture here of the architecture. What I'm really saying here is don't get too hung up on descriptions. Learn to see how your own photography works and what works for you. Anyway, I hope that's of some interest and some, maybe of some help even if you're trying to explore your own prints and your own photography. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you've got comments, suggestions, please do let me know uh, because I appreciate them. They give me ideas for new videos and various things. Check out the comments and the description for this and I'll put a few links to other relevant things as well. But thank you very much.